Good day everyone, this is Dasaro, the most handsome Yekebo African Nations Adrenaline Pumping Husband. And today, I have to present this presentation, or to presentation this present with me, my most superoni, pepperoni, superlicious hot baby girl. On today's show, I'm Joket Soluari Setro, and we are always happy having you coming back every time to the Setro's Vlog family. Yeah! If you're not a part of this family, please, what are you waiting for? Subscribe and press the notification bell so that you'll be notified of our latest videos. And want to say, please press on CC, meaning close caption for subtitling. We want to say a big thank you to all that have been liking, commenting, sharing, tweeting, retweeting. Please don't stop. And a big thank you goes to all our patrons and supporters on this channel and you can actually be part of our patrons for as low as three dollars per month the patreon link is in the description box below don't forget to follow us on instagram setros log on facebook we're setros log at twitter and only setros log and we do have a backup channel called setros tv yeah <laughs> today is very 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 important and interesting you don't have to miss it today i'll be telling you our love story yeah, yeah. how it all started you know, in, in some movies, they will show you how Cinderella's story was made, how Dilanoko Pakara met Cinderella in the bush of Africa. But in this particular one, we are going to be taking you down the memory lane. How I met this, my supernicious pepperoni hot baby girl, the most outstanding yekebu pimple on my face. <laughs> can see she's loving it, <laughs> loving it. And that is to tell you that the story of our marriage is something that you really need to sit down, grab a cup of coffee, get a popcorn, and just enjoy. Okay, uh, Mr. Cetro, yeah. when was the first day ever in your life you saw me, and what was the jingling reaction in you? <laughs> I'm sure you don't want to listen to this. <laughs> This is not one of the romantic story you have ever heard. <laughs> now, this is directly from the water of Megiddo. <laughs> <laughs> the first day I saw this smile, babe, shockingly, I was thinking that she's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> and you might not really understand. I was thinking that, ah, oh, maybe the kingdom of darkness, they sent this water girl to me. <laughs> To come and spoil my relationship because then then i used to have a kind of belief system that spirit coco we call spirit coco <laughs> the spirit coco you might not understand <laughs> over here in africa we believe that for you to be very very close to god for you to be very very close to god you don't have to come near girls in the school days, in secondary school, they used to call us, don't touch. A girl cannot touch me. How dare you touch me, holy brother. <laughs> brother that is on fire for God. <laughs> that knows God, one-on-one -on -one relationship. We call ourselves, and a sister will now, a girl, when I mean a sister, any lady, any opposite gender, is treated as a, what, as a suspect. That is just my own personal belief then. So the day I was sleeping and I had a knock and all of a sudden someone was there. I opened the door only to find this beautiful Mbeke. <laughs> so when I saw her, I said, okay, how may I help you? She said, hey, please, I'm asking of, she now mentioned my sister's name, that she, she came to check on my sister. With sleepy eyes, I then asked, okay, when my sister comes back, what name should I mention? I was still half asleep. Only for her to mention her name and her surname. And my eyes was wide open and I was scared. I was terrified. I was fearful eyes. <laughs> Do you know? Do you want to know the reason why I was scared? Because not many days ago, I just had a dream. Yeah. I was still in college. Over here in Africa, we call it secondary school. I have a group of people that we usually, you know, pray together. We usually spend time praying together. And they were talking about marriage, marriage. I'm not this kind of marriage-centric guy. Out of all of them, I'm always about accomplishment, 
you know, uh, being successful at what you are doing, being progressive, you know, just go to university was the next thing in my mind, you know. But this my other friend, they are always like they are, they are always like balancing everything up. They want uh, success also, but they also talk about marriage. Me, I don't talk about marriage because maybe because of my experience with my dad and mom, I never saw big deal in marriage, so I was scared and skeptical about marriage. But they told me that I should start praying about marriage. So one of the nine, I just said, okay, God, it's not as if I'm interested in this stuff like that, but maybe you should just show me. God, just show me who I want should get married to in future. And lo and behold, I just prayed a few days and said, God, just show me who I should get married to in future. Because I'm not ready now. I need to go, <laughs> go to school and start making good money to take care of my parents, my family, their marriage. And I had a dream. That's why some of you, your belief system, don't mind my belief system. I believe my own belief system works for me. And whatever you practice is up to you. I'm not judging anybody, so don't judge me. <laughs> Only for me to sleep, and I saw, I heard clearly, clearly, I was in, I was like a desert place, and I heard loud call of my name three times, and they mentioned a name and the surname, a name and the surname. Now, let me give you the interesting part. The interesting part is that when I was growing up as a young Christian boy, my mindset is that it is whatever God gives you in marriage, you take. And most of the time, God doesn't give you beautiful girls. <laughs> he can give you what some people will call war Or what you call waski war. <laughs> or what you just call agama. <laughs> so, I wasn't expecting somebody beautiful. I wasn't minding that. My own utmost stuff is just somebody that is just the perfect way of God for me in marriage. So, fast forwarding into this particular day, and she came and I asked her, she came to ask for my sister, asked after my sister, and I asked her and she mentioned her name, my goodness. I was scared. In my mind, I was like, ah. So there's the kingdom of darkness that want to come and spoil my relationship with God. That send this mommy or that girl. How can the will of God be this beautiful, fair, fair? Because I usually see fair ladies as children of Satan. <laughs> then I'm telling you, just my church mind. And I was surprised. So I went back to God in prayer. I said, no. I will call her name in the midnight. I will say, I invite fire. Holy Ghost, come now. And pray. So you want that talking? Okay? If this witch that they have sent to me to come and confuse me, I must go to school. I must not be distracted. Yes, you spirit of lust, you spirit of a romantic misunderstanding. Expire my fire, thunder, me. I was calling all sorts. But the more I pray about her out of my heart, the more I fall in love like a donkey. <laughs> so, what I now do is anytime I say I don't talk to her, Say this one, this one want to capture this art. This art is for God, God alone. <laughs> but you know the funny stuff is that the more I just forgot about her, went to school. I never, I never walked up to her because my mindset is that until I'm through with my university, I'm working well paid, that I can take care of a woman. I will never walk up to her and ask for her hand in marriage. And I will never ask any girl in marriage till I am ready to say, I do. So, that was how the love story starts. So that I will not be the only one talking because I have a whole lot to reveal about this hot babe. And let me tell you, then this, as in what you are seeing here, she's so pretty. She's been so as pretty as she has been from youth fair, you know, skinny. And one good thing is that I love to marry wives. All my <laughs> dream was to marry wives. You wife. are just talking. Or an Igbo girl. 
I love to marry in Africa, a particular part in Africa that they call them the Igbos. I love the Igbo girls. Fair Igbo girls. Fair Agantawa. <laughs> <laughs> so when but I was scared that how can God come and give me this one as the will of God in marriage? That was how the story started, and I think I've answered that. So I'm going to ask her this question now. When was the first time you ever saw this hot, sweet, sensational a physique my own at a company husband when I was small? Let me tell you, when I was younger, I was even more handsome than this. It is the problem of how to fix Nigeria up <laughs> and Africa. <laughs> and has made me to still be looking this yuppy. <laughs> so let, let's ask her now. <laughs> so the struggle was so much. <laughs> I don't want to see him. I want to see him. I love him. I can't express it. Yeah, I can never. How dare. <laughs> me, you don't even know. Before, do you know what they used to call me? Let me just dish to you. 